Hello, Jeremy Parker here, and in this video, I'm going to give you my thoughts on the Arturia Polybrute, which I recently purchased. I'll describe my unboxing and setup experience, show some example sounds I made, and give an overall review of this instrument so far. How will this be any different than the many other excellent Polybrute reviews out there? Unlike most reviewers, I'm only just coming back to the synthesizer scene after many years of really being focused on vintage electromechanical keyboard instruments. But perhaps my naive yet fresh perspective will somehow resonate with certain viewers who might be looking to make their first serious synth purchase. Also, we already know from the many YouTube demos that the Polybrute excels at these lush, beautiful pads and crazy metalized edgy leads with great built-in reverb, etc. But can the Polybrute get funky? Since much of the music I play is on the jazz funk side of things, I wanted to help answer that question. We also know that the user interface is excellent with basically knob per function and a mod matrix that is super intuitive. But would I be able to easily make a cool sound with it as my first real analog synth ever? Back in the 1980s and 90s, I was obsessed with synthesizers and would drool over my monthly subscription to Keyboard Magazine, fantasizing about someday owning a flagship synthesizer from one of the many companies I admired. As if it mattered, I kept up with the gear reviews and new releases, etc., and I would jump at the chance to visit Falsetti's Music in the mall, near where I grew up, to see and hear the latest gear. Half of the reason I'd stay up late to watch Arsenio Hall was to see Michael Wolf and Star Parody from the Posse jam on their synthesizers. Crazy story, my sister was actually featured as a guest DJ on the show years later when it came back on the air. What a trip. Although being a kid pretty much limited my options, I was fortunate enough to get a Yamaha B200 and an Alesis HR16 as Christmas gifts in the late 80s, which I connected up to our Commodore Amiga over MIDI. I was psyched, and I learned so much with that setup. But as I moved from high school into college, I sort of lost my way in the synth world. So fast forward to today, and after restoring a couple of 1970s mono synths, well, I got the bug again. I knew I wanted an analog polysynth, so it was between things like the Prophet Rev 4, the Moog 1, the UDO Super 6, and of course the Arturia Polybrute. I pretty much watched every video I could find on these keyboards, and although any one of these options would have been a solid choice, the value and unique features of the Polybrute won me over. In my vast collection of vintage keyboards and even my new grand piano, I knew there was a big sonic hole in my studio's capabilities. Like most of us mere mortals, I have budget and space constraints, and I was looking at this purchase like, if I could only get one synth to put in this spot right here, to cover as many of the sounds I could possibly want into the foreseeable future, for not an insane amount of money, what would it be? That was my reasoning for wanting the Polybrute. And after waiting for the initial feelings of gear lust to subside, I knew I was in the right space to pull the trigger. So I placed my order, and a few weeks later, the Polybrute arrived. I don't know about you, but the anticipation of seeing that FedEx or UPS truck drop off a very large, valuable cardboard box never gets old. Oh, happy day. I was impressed with the build quality and overall heft of the Polybrute. One thing that was unexpected was the size of those feet. Holy cow, are they big. And there's six of them. I made some risers to get my keyboard stand to just the right height so the keyboard could overlap my desk on the left side. But of course, one of the giant feet was in the way. 
So I took it off, glad it was screwed in, not stuck on. So problem solved. And then it was time to remove all the protective pieces of film. Always satisfying. So once I got it all set up, powered it on, the very first message said the Polybrute was cold and would I like to calibrate? And so I thought, sure, sounds good. Well, it got stuck in this calibration step and then failed. I then looked on the forums and found that the latest firmware should fix this problem. I still wonder why calibration should be presented as an option when the electronics are still cold. Wouldn't you want to calibrate after components had reached thermal equilibrium? In any case, the new firmware and proper warm-up time led to a successful calibration and has been stable for me. It's been a few weeks since the last one and I haven't noticed any tuning issues, etc. So my impression is that the calibration would be an every once in a while kind of thing. The other thing I noticed is that the background noise was rather high. Although I had heard this from another reviewer, so it wasn't a huge surprise. I know it's apples and oranges, but I recorded the noise floor from the Polybrew and compared it to my Nord stage. I set each keyboard to max volume and then set the input gain to just shy of clipping when playing a chord in each case. If you have some headphones and want to take a listen, here's the Polybrute. And here's the stage. I ran an FFT on both files, and the Polybrute is about 14 dB noisier than the stage below 10 kHz, ignoring the power supply harmonics and other spikes. In practice, I don't think this will be an issue for the Polybrute, it's just disappointing I suppose. Funny enough, I might have uncovered some noise shaping going on in the Nord stage from the look of that high frequency bump in the spectrum, but it's not very audible. Since I'm on the negatives, the only other stumbling block was getting the Polybrute Connect VST to work properly in my DAW, Reaper. I went on to the Arturia forum and posted several times without a response. After a few weeks, someone did chime in, but it wasn't exactly the interactive experience I was hoping for. But I suppose I should have just gone straight to Arturia customer support. I was able to fix the primary issue by just making sure that the Polybrute wasn't asleep when the driver and VST were initialized by Reaper, but I'm still experiencing some occasional hanging notes, and I don't think the playback of recorded MIDI is working exactly as intended. I still need to contact Arturia, and I do hope that this will all eventually get worked out. On the topic of the feel of the controls and the keyboard itself, well, it seems quite nice overall. The pitch bend and mod wheel feel solid and smooth, and both the hard buttons and soft illuminated buttons aren't wiggly at all and give a satisfying click. The plastic knobs have a slight rubberized texture, it seems, and don't wobble, so they actually don't feel as cheap as I thought they would. As you might expect, the master cutoff and modulation amount knobs definitely feel more substantial and smooth. And the sliders are easy to move with a nice damped feel. I'm not so accustomed to synth actions, to be honest, but it seems nice enough. All right, so this is the very first sound I made. It uses both VCOs, it uses the sub oscillator, uses both filters, and it pans them left and right and then when I morph to the B sound so it was uh, it was fun to make and it uh, has that sort of retro kind of Roland SH-1000 if it could be a polysynth kind of thing <laughs> Although I liked the sound I was getting on the bass, the right hand uh, was a bit too loud. So I thought, well, what if I take this as the basis for a new sound 
and create a split point and then just adjust the volume exactly how I want. So this next sound is really just the same bass sound, more or less, but with a clav-like sound in the right hand. And uh, that let me, with the split point, adjust the levels how I wanted. And then I made a little, I jammed out on it a little bit here. Okay, so this sound is the cassette RFI sound. Um, that's one of the stock sounds. It's that lo-fi electric piano kind of thing, which I really liked, but the release was just a little bit too long, so I just shortened it up and uh, made it a little bit more playable for my, for my taste. Here's a cool bass sound I made. And then the B panel has a bit more of a muted sound. And here's a pad I made that's got a very slow attack time and more reverb when you play it softly. But when you play it with uh, more velocity, it has a quick attack time and very little reverb. And so I thought it was pretty neat to be able to use the mod matrix and just easily make that happen. And so here's a little jam I did using both these sounds. Thank you. 
And then finally, here's my take on one of those big lush pads. Overall, I'm really enjoying this instrument, discovering new things every time I sit down, and I think it's fantastic. Sure, I'd love to have more polyphony and a lower noise floor, etc., but I realize that there are trade-offs that need to be made when launching a product of this complexity at a cost that the market can bear in some significant volume. In terms of possible improvements that could be made with the given hardware, I'd love to see some tweakable parameters for the chorus and flanger, assumed to require menu diving, but no problem. I also wondered if there would be some way to EQ or effectively boost certain ranges of the keyboard. The former would be implementing digital EQ with the same onboard DSP that's doing the other digital effects, and the latter would be a method of tailoring the loudness of certain regions of the keyboard. What I mean by that is, I would think it possible to taper the VCA response across the keyboard to allow the lower couple of octaves, for example, to be emphasized compared to the rest of the keyboard. There aren't exactly unused knobs that can just be assigned to this, so it would inevitably mean some kind of menu diving. But the reason I bring it up is just that I found myself wanting to tweak the tonal balance of the sound I was making without touching the filter parameters. I'm a total noob at modern synths, I know, so who am I? And I can obviously apply EQ in the mix, but it's just something that came to mind. Eventually, I'd probably want to bring the Polybrute on a gig, so I'd also love to see Arturia offer a lightweight, semi-hard case for local travel. I have yet to dig into the sequencer and arpeggiator, which is a powerful area of the polybrute, and I'm obviously only just covering the tip of the iceberg here with what's possible. Nevertheless, I hope this review was helpful to you in some way, and I hope you enjoyed the sounds and music from this video that used exclusively the polybrute, aside from my drums plugin. I have some pretty neat stuff cooking for future videos, so stay tuned. But thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.